Welcome back Digital Watch fans to Vintage Digital Watches and to this, let's call it, I have some explaining to do video. So I sold a third of my collection. So I went from around 110 watches to approximately uh, 75 if my last count is correct. And I'm doing this video uh, basically for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is uh, some people were wondering uh, if I'm going out of this hobby. Well, rest assured I am not. And the other reason is I'm curious if other collectors uh, went through this stage and what they did to overcome uh, the problems that I have with uh, having a big collection. So to put it in two words, I sold my collection because I had too many. And too many can mean a lot of things. So I sat down to organize my thoughts uh, and I came up with this seven reasons and I will list them quick because I do realize maybe this video isn't something that uh, people are interested in, but rest assured you will see some watches throughout the video. So here goes uh, reason number one, and that is I couldn't remember all of them. So uh, I was up to the point that when I saw a watch that I wanted to buy, uh, if it wasn't one of my higher end watches or rare ones or ones that I uh, specifically remember I restored, I had to physically come up to my collection and check if I have that watch or not. So. Uh, and in my book, that is not okay. That means that uh, you're not collecting. You just, you're borderline to hoarding. The next reason is uh, I could not keep up with servicing and restoring them. Uh, when I get a watch, I like to do a service or a restoration, depending what the case is. Uh, if it's a beat up watch, then I go through a uh, process of restoring it. If it's uh, an okay watch, I like to do a complete service and then put it up for display uh, in the collection. That's sort of a ritual that I have uh, before I can call a watch as part of my collection. And I just didn't have time to do that anymore because uh, there were so many activities uh, tied into having uh, over a 100 watch collection that I just didn't have time uh, to do that. It was going so slow that uh, physically adding a watch uh, to my shelves was taking forever. Okay, the next reason is sort of tied into the uh, one that I mentioned previously, and that is I had too many watches in different states. Uh, and what I mean by this is uh, either in my watch list uh, or on order or on route or at the post office or hanging out in a drawer uh, waiting to be restored and having so many watches uh, in those different stages means uh, yeah that you have little time to cater uh, maybe to one or two restorations a month. Going on to the next reason uh, I was buying anything that was uh, sort of attractive to me and had uh, just a bit below market price value uh, if it had those two uh, characteristics, I would buy it. I wouldn't think, uh, do I like this watch? Uh, what will it take to restore it? Uh, do I have the time to do everything necessary to add it to my collection? So uh, there wasn't even the hunt factor. If I saw it and I liked it a bit below pr market price, I bought it. So again, going borderline to hoarding. My next reason is, uh, because there were too many watches, I had too little time to do all the other activities connected to watch collecting, like doing YouTube videos. Uh, to, if you look at my upload history, that has been, oh God, I had breaks for spanning months. Uh, or uh, engaging with people on the Facebook, Facebook group, talking to other collectors. So these activities sort of took a second role because I wanted to focus my time on uh, the watches that I didn't even want to collect. Okay, the next reason is, and probably this is a bit stupid, uh, but uh, maybe I'm not the only guilty for this. I was buying to rescue watches. So uh, in my mind, I thought that I had the best home to give uh, to the watches. It didn't matter if I already had the watch and this is how you end up with doubles or triples or quadruples, I thought that, oh no, I, I should get this watch. God forbid uh, somebody wear, buy, buys that watch and wears it. 
so buying just to rescue the watch uh, that's not something i want to do anymore there are plenty of collectors out there that should have uh, those watches in their collections uh, i know some people go for uh, having a watch on display having a watch uh, to wear having a watch in case the wearing one fails having a watch in case the one on display fails and so on uh, if you have uh, like a watch that you really 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 like then I guess that's okay to have <laughs> triples but in my case I had uh, triples of watches just because I wanted to rescue them okay and the last reason is uh, sort of a byproduct of all the other reasons or um, when you just buy watches with no target you end up going into this cycle of also selling them because if you buy a watch uh, just because it caught your eye for, for a bit of a second uh, and it was the right price uh, you're not going to like that watch uh, a month after you own it because you didn't buy it uh, for liking it you bought it for other reasons and you end up wanting to sell it and guess what selling watches takes time i know because uh, i started selling that third of my collection uh, last year's fall so yeah going to the post office talking to people mailing the watches that also guess what takes time so those are the reasons and uh, i can honestly say uh, that at this point as a conclusion after I sold that third of my collection I'm happy because I don't feel I am halfway into hoarding anymore uh, I managed to have a more personal connection with the watches that I have uh, I know when I bought them I know what I paid for them I know the reasons why I bought it I know when I wore it I know what I had to do to restore it uh, and so on and guess what I can actually afford some higher-end digitals uh, just buying continuously means that uh, if a grail shows up and uh, you are short on money the chances of you passing up that grail are higher rather than if you didn't buy a watch for let's say two months uh, then that's another reason to warrant uh, buying that grail but if in the last two months you just purchased 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 10 watches then guess what that uh, investment uh, is not going to go in your grail that's going to stay in those 20 uh, watches okay so I am due to do a state of the collection now that uh, it's been sized down uh, but just as a sneak peek here's a quick shot of my collection how it looks now I did add some higher-end pieces uh, after selling the ones that I didn't want and I'm curious of your opinion D did I do the right thing uh, is this a stage in a collector's life, I suppose? You uh, hit a peak of a certain number of items and then you realize that you're not going on the correct road. Will I regret this down the line? Comment below, do your worst, uh, be as honest as possible. Uh, I feel that I did the right thing and I'm happy at this point. So uh, I'm not going to ask to give a thumbs up or thumb downs to this video because uh, it was more of a personal video. Uh, do subscribe to the channel because I try to release as often as possible digital watch related videos. And uh, the state of the collection video is coming up really soon. And at that point uh, I will also do the watches that I bought in the last half year. Uh, the most interesting pieces that I ever got will be in that video and I know uh, you will like it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!